Tommy's gonna taste the gin so that you don't have to Let you save your money, yeah, that's what Tommy wants Minimal dilution, cause we wanna taste the gins But if the gins are bad, then we will throw them in the bin Now let's head it over to Tommy, who is gonna taste? He's gonna get on rowdy and shout up the place Hey, 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 and welcome back to Tommy Tastes, the channel where I taste the gin so that you don't have to. But more importantly, how do we like that gin? We like it neat, we like it neat. I'm bringing that one out for Christmas. Let's crack on and taste some gin. It's tasting, it's tasting time. So this week, it is my pleasure to present to you the wonderful Gin Mare. I am fairly certain that it is Mare how it's pronounced. It's not Gin Mare, it's not Gin Ma, I don't think, but if anyone wants to get in touch and correct me, feel free to do so. But I assure you, if you buy this gin, you will not be having a Gin Mare. <laughs> no, quite the opposite. This is the gin of my dreams. This is absolutely phenomenal. And yes, I've cheated by already tasting this gin. I know exactly what this is like. However, the background to it is quite interesting for me, given that I used to manage a bar, and this was one of the first kind of ultra premium gins. Mm, I'm not sure about ultra premium, but certainly premium gins that I was introduced to. And I bought it in for the bar purely because some that used to came in told me how much he liked to gaze across the water at my villa in Spain with a cool gin mare. And I thought... I would like to take a moment to apologise for calling this guy a twat. I can assure you that he was actually more of a twat. And I thought, you're a prick, but I want to see what this gin tastes like. Anyway, got it in, and I was quite aware that this was going to be kind of an unusual gin given the fact that in addition to the kind of normal botanicals that you would expect from a gin, this is very proud of its Spanish Mediterranean heritage, and as a result, adds four botanicals that are not terribly common into the gin. So we've got rosemary, thyme, basil, and the star of the show, olive. Now, I've not come across another gin to date that has olive in it, but it makes for a very interesting, herbaceous, and quite savoury component within the gin, and it's absolutely phenomenal. However, when I first tried it, I thought that this was shit. I really didn't enjoy it, and I'm not sure why. I think I must have just had an off day tasting, and it did nothing for me. It took another two years until I think I tried it again, at which point I thought, you have been a moron. And I got Gin Mare wrong on first impressions. And I think sometimes it's good to get th things wrong the first time that you try them. For example, some of my favorite albums, films, are all things that I've tried first time round and gone, I don't know if I like this. But it's that continual thinking that gets you round to trying it again and then proving that you're wrong. For example, the film A Razorhead by David Lynch. Perfect example of a film that's near impossible to like on first watch, unless the thing that gets you off in life is watching a man vomit out a giant sperm within the first 20 minutes. Ticked all my boxes, but it was that continual, there must be something in this that kept me coming back to it. And it's what made me go back to Gin Mare and realize that I'd been a moron. But you get things wrong first time, like I said. For example, when I was a teenager, I thought Jeremy Clarkson was funny. Anyway, now that we've mentioned Jeremy Clarkson, it's got me in the mood to taste. Nobody knows what that means, no one really cares, drink the drink. Within my poncy little glass, I've got my perfect measure of gin mare there, and I am so excited to get my nose in the glass and tell you in a really poncy way what I think of this gin. Get right in my nose. What I love about this gin is how savoury it is on the nose. With a lot of gins, you get that real citrus component hitting you right away, or something that's kind of distinctly sweet within it. With this one, it's all about this woody spice, and then kind of the aromatics and the sweetness, if you will. It's not coming from the orange or the lemons that go into the botanicals of this gin. I think it's more from the basil. 
and the woodiness I think comes a bit more from the rosemary but there is something that is just that tiny bit briny in there and I'm guessing that is those olives. Let's have a taste. Sipping gin and juice laying underneath the palm trees. So this is everything I love about gin right here. The finish on this gin is incredible. It is so saline and it has this length that just stays with you and the flavor just keeps developing in your mouth. Really very similar to the nose. Although the citrus comes out a little more on the palate and you get this kind of really nice orangey perfume as well. But it really is those four key ingredients that they use in this. So the rosemary, the thyme, the basil and the olives. That salinity that I mentioned on the nose really does come through on the palate and it keeps you wanting to reach time and time again for this gin. But let's get our trusty ice cube in there and see how ice affects the flavour. Get it all down you dirty boy. So that minor dilution from the ice and the kind of cooling down of the alcohol has really made for a different flavour complexity here. The whole thing is so much more salty now. Salt Lake City. It's also got this great sweetness to it. I really feel the orange and the lemon are really just creating these lovely kind of oily textures. And it's just so, so good. I cannot put into words just how much I love that flavour. Um, the woodiness is still there. And I'm certainly getting more of, say, the thyme coming through. There's a definite kind of thyme aromatic that's playing in there. But let's see if that comes out a little more with a splash of water in there. Drink, drink, lads, drink. So I think that the key thing to mention is that the salinity is still there. Well, let's talk about sex, baby. Let's talk about you and me. And the citrus aroma is still really hitting me. The rosemary and the woodiness I've now slightly lost. And I think that's why for me this gin works perfectly without dilution. Obviously what they'll tell you is that Mediterranean tonic is the kind of perfect pairing to go along with such a gin. And that it should be a long drink served in a balloon glass with as much ice in there as you can get. But for me just cut out the tonic. The tonic is not worth having. It's spoiling this gin. I think just with the ice cube or neat it is perfect and I cannot stress perfect quite enough. It has such an intense beautiful flavour with such clarity to the botanicals. This is the first gin I have come across where I would treat it exactly the same as a wine. I would pair this with food. This would go so perfectly with so many different types of tapas. Things like seafood or even kind of salumi, cold meats and cheeses would work perfectly with this gin. To be honest it's easier for me to tell you the things I don't like about this gin than tell you all the things that I do like. Really what I don't like about it is the bottle. For some reason this bottle does nothing for me. It's certainly eye-catching and I've never really come across another bottle like it but I just don't like it and the only person I've actually come across that's really into this bottle is my wife. Yes wife. Also another thing that I'm kind of on the fence about with it is the alcoholic content. It's 42.7%. I'm guessing it's an incredibly specific percent on the basis that they have probably diluted this perfectly down to a point where it is both palatable but you are still getting all of the effects of the olive in there. So that brininess and the woody notes that come through. I'm guessing if they diluted it to, to a higher percentage, say 43, all of these things would start to drop off. So I do think that it is a real masterpiece that a distiller has come across and has a sincere appreciation for the product that they have put in the bottle, hence have not chosen to dilute it anymore. So neither should you. No diluting, not now, not never, not with Gin Mare. There's something very interesting that I want to put in the description of this video, which is a tasting profile that Gin Mare give on their website, which for nerds out there who are really into distilling or really into tasting, it gives you such a great overview of everything that you should get with Gin Mare. And it's completely true to its word on that. I think the last thing to mention on this gin as well has to be the price. Now, this does come in over 30 pounds. We're talking about 
ish pounds for a bottle, which is probably at the upper limit of where most people are prepared to go to when it comes to gin. I, for one, had a very kind of why should a gin cost much more than 25 pound attitude. If Tanqueray 10 can knock it out of the park at 25 quid, why should I bother going over that? This is one of the things it's well worth going over that 25 pound limit for. This is so unique and it is such a flavor sensation that is like nothing else I've tried. If you're going to spend over 25 pounds, make sure that Gin Mare is one of the gins that you're going for. Well, even our cocktails anyway, they're basically just fruit juice for adults. Ugh. If you are diluting this, you are diluting this purely with a tiny bit of water from the ice that you use in a cocktail shaker. I have banged on about this no end, but if you use this for anything other than an extra dry martini, then you are a fool. Do not go putting this in anything that is not a martini. There needs to be a hint of vermouth in your martini, but it is all about this. This is the thing. Do not dilute this. Do not mix this with anything else. If you put this with something else, I will personally come round to your house and take a shit on your carpet. Yes, I would. Like and subscribe. Like, like, like. Ooh, and subscribe. The colors of the world, like and subscribe. Every boy and every girl, like and subscribe. The people of the world, like and subscribe. Oh, like and subscribe.